Ivalyn Harris is a maroon healer in Jamaica. She has spent decades making a living from her knowledge of Jamaican plants and their healing properties. The products she makes from these plants are in constant demand and she's happy to be able to help others. She is symbolic of many persons in the Caribbean whose traditional knowledge is a rich and often unacknowledged resource. You have to be curious to learn about herbs. This is dog's blood and this one is good for infection or black tube. And this one is piaba. And the piaba is what good for women who is going through menopause. She, like many others in the region, can share stories of how her knowledge has contributed to research without being properly credited or compensated. But all that will change as more Caribbean countries are getting on board with a Nagoya protocol that will protect knowledge held by persons like Ivalyn and will serve to preserve the natural resources she depends on. The Nagoya Protocol is an international agreement that focuses on the fair and equitable sharing of the benefits from the sustainable use of genetic resources. It is an agreement that researchers and prospective business developers that use the Caribbean's natural resources need to be aware of. The Caribbean region has an abundant variety of marine and terrestrial biodiversity, including a high number of endemic species of flora and fauna. This richness is combined with a mix of cultures and traditional knowledge. Also, it is clear that Caribbean countries recognize the importance of their unique genetic resources and associated traditional knowledge, and at the same time know that sharing the benefits of the utilization of these resources can be a way to protect the rich natural resources and bring prosperity to Caribbean people. The International Union for the Conservation of Nature, IUCN, in partnership with the United Nations Environmental Program, UNEP, and the Global Environment Facility, GEF, is working with regional governments, research institutions, and other partners in the Caribbean to support countries to promote the sustainable use of the region's resources. The needs are envisioned at three levels. One is at local levels, working with local communities and indigenous groups. The second level is the national level, working mainly with uh, government and key line agencies that are going to be um, somehow responsible to implement the protocol, to have competencies according to the national law and the international legislation. And the third level is the regional level, working with a CARICOM, for example, with OECS, other regional bodies like tourism organizations or other uh, pertinent bodies that has responsibilities as well and the, the provision of the Nagoya Protocol. Regulations will also be established for prior informed consent to access resources and the negotiation of mutually agreed terms to maximize the benefits of the protocol. The uh, Nagoya Protocol specifically deals with the issue of access to genetic resources and the sharing of the benefits that are gained from those resources. Now, if you think about the issue of sustainable development, if you think about the issue of uh, natural resource management, it is necessary for these countries who in most cases are small island developing states or um, developing countries, they need resources to be able to protect these natural resources that we have, these genetic resources. And so any avenue that is going to assist with making sure that some of these benefits come back in order to sustainably use these resources is something that the IUCN is always interested in, in providing. The Bahamas, for example, is a hot spot for access to genetic resources for research and development. But only in one case of successful commercialization has benefit sharing with a country on the basis of an ABS contract took place. There is a soft coral, which um, is a wavy coral. It was, it's harvested annually in the Bahamas. And an extract from that was the first source of the chemicals which are used today in skin revitalizing anti-aging creams. One of the um, researchers from the University of California 
uh, came to the Bahamas and um, discovered a class of compounds which um, have uh, anti-inflammatory properties. Later on, over a hundred products in the world have been developed from the extracts from this coral. For practitioners such as Dr. Sylvia Mitchell, the protocol will change the way how local communities and indigenous people like the Amer Indians, Maroons and Rastafarians operate. The indigenous and local communities have to be part of the process. A very important part that the Nagoya Protocol recognizes in this whole value chain is that there are local indigenous communities all over the biodiversity rich areas that have over many, many generations developed recipes. And when you develop products in the end, many, many years later, creams, anti-cancer, whatever, many times that traditional knowledge has, taken, has been taken into account, but it doesn't filter back to those local communities. Several Caribbean countries have already started putting in the framework to benefit from the implementation of the Nagoya Protocol. In Guyana, certain key steps have been taken. Guyana already had a system in place with regards to granting access to its genetic resources. And that system is basically done through the Environmental Protection Agency. Uh, we're the agency responsible for granting all access to persons coming into the country to do uh, research. If persons want to uh, enter a specific community to access a specific resource, they have to get the consent of that community. When that consent is received, what they do is they have to submit that to, we have a Ministry of Indigenous Peoples Affairs and they would usually issue uh, official permission saying the community has an objection with this person coming in to do such and such. When we have that, then we would issue our uh, permit. For Antigua and Barbuda, much has already been done as these islands are in the process of depositing their ratification instrument. This project will allow us to develop our regulations, to develop our policy, to set up our institutional infrastructure to now manage the issues. We don't know when any genetic materials and the associated traditional knowledge are being taken out of the country. We're not aware. It's only those people who will inform certain agencies or certain government agencies that they're taking them out. That only happens occasionally. But in instituting this Nagoya protocol, in instituting our ABS regulations and policy, we'll be able to finally have a system to regulate this process. The Nagoya protocol is helping to preserve traditional knowledge that could be lost as elders die. Over a period of time, people will come there, people have their complaints, people want to be treated for some ailments or whatever, and people just Community folks will do what they have to do for them, but not necessarily telling them, you know, what is it I have done for you. Okay, if you come, you have a problem with your belly or your back or your shoulder or whatever, you will get the treatment for it. But it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to know that all the ingredients and stuff that goes into it. And even sometimes if people would um, probably show to you, you might see an ingredient or two that they use, but it would be probably the least important of the ingredient that you would have seen. As the Caribbean embraces new opportunities to benefit from our biological resources, we look to the future. I represent 11 parishes across the island which have a membership of about 5,000. These are traditional farmers who have been growing marijuana illegally for years. Now that we are on the way to have a formal industry, we are working hard to allow standards to fit their needs as grassroots people while working with governments and agencies across the world. The Nagoya Protocol is opening doors for Caribbean people.